What's up, y'all? Welcome to the Sam the Beard Guy channel. Um, hope y'all like this layout. I went back to the old uh, layout that I used to have for my room. So um, I changed it because I had monitors and different things, but have a simpler setup now. So now I have the camera back where I want it. So hopefully y'all like this look uh, more. I hope y'all had a good Christmas and have some fun plans coming up for the new year. Um, what I wanted to talk about today in this video is just five things that I <clears throat> learned uh, that kind of changed how I approach piano. Um, I've done videos like this before where they're like very like technically specific uh, things that I've learned that would change how I approach scales or chords or whatever whatever it was. This is more of a like conceptual things that I've learned about music that changes how I approach piano uh, from things like simpler is better uh, to you know melody uh, is king uh, listening to music uh, things like that uh, which at this stage in my life and career that's these are the type of things that really make a difference for me um, and so yeah five things I learned how to change uh, five things I learned that change how I play piano a very big picture uh, level and these are things going into 2023 uh, that you can focus on uh, I want to focus on more uh, just as I grow as a musician and you can too um, on just how to be better and to kind of use these things to do that so um, as always like sub share comment all the things helps the channel grow we're getting close to 13,000 subs I think we're like 90 away so uh, you know slow but we're, we're moving so uh, yeah five things I learned that change how I approach piano the first one that I want to talk about excuse me is a uh, simple is better not uh, we'll talk about from the musical perspective in a second but from a professional perspective simple is better a lot of the time not always but a lot of times so an example would be you know we just finished up Christmas season right so Joy to the world. So that's fun to play, and that sounds fun, it sounds cool, I guess, um, but from a professional perspective, you know, if I'm playing that in a, you know, in a group with the, a group of other people, and all I'm doing is just playing all that stuff um, over other people, and they're also doing something like that, um, it's not going to translate as well. So, something like... Can, you know when you're playing that way you can find ways to kind of throw in something that adds a little bit of flavor so <laughs> yeah so um, that is one thing that I've learned just over time um, that is really hard for like the jazz heads of the world, kind of like myself, or the you know the guys that have a lot of technique, we kind of attach this. <clears throat> I don't know if pride is the right word, but we kind of attach this like, hey, I need to prove myself um, in a certain environment, and the way I'm going to do that is by coming in and showing 
how versed I am or how much I can play or how fast I can play or how many cool things I can do. And it's, it's, a, it's a big hurdle for people to get over to realize that, hey, this person that's hired you to come in and do this thing is looking for you to be a part of creating a product and creating something. And it's not really ever, sometimes it is, but it's usually not centered and focused around you. Now, this is, you know, that's obviously excluding, uh, you know, you getting hired to do something that is artistic y and is focused on you and features you. But in just a normal, like, band environment, you're getting hired to come in and be a part of and be a fraction of, you know, the whole 100% product. And so if you're overplaying, playing too much, um, and just making the music about you, you're not going to, you might not get asked back. Maybe you do, you get a second or third chance or whatever. But I have found that, you know, I'll, I'll go and go out and do something and then I never get called back for it. And it's like, dang. And then I, you know, in two, two years down the road, I'm like, actually, I probably never got called back for that because I totally overplayed on that gig. And so there's, there's a really mental thing there that it took me forever to figure out of how can I prove to people that I'm really good at what I do when all I'm doing is just playing whole notes or all I'm doing is just playing quarter notes or something really, really simple. Um, and it just took me a really long time to, you know, allow myself to be okay with when I get to a gig, I'm not having to prove every single time that I'm you know, I'm showing how good I am to the max every single occasion. That's just not part of the professional music world, and that's just not how it works. And if that is how you think it works, you're, it's very unlikely that you get called for many things. Unless you build a career around you doing that, you're not going to get called for stuff. And so that, um, yeah, hopefully that makes sense. It took me a long time to get over that. I feel like I finally understand that, like, at my core, and so I'm able to go into gigs, and if it just requires me to play whole notes, then that's what I'm doing, um, but it took for a long time uh, for me to be okay with that. Even this past Christmas, the Christmas Eve uh, services we did, uh, I kind of walked away from it, and it's like, well, I probably, I mean, it's Christmas, so it's probably fine, but I did probably play a little bit too much, but, you know, Christmas, so whatever. Uh, but what I did for Christmas Eve, I probably wouldn't do normally. And so, uh, you know, music is fun. You want to have fun and you want to enjoy doing it. And so there's there's a, a healthy balance of, you know, finding ways to play creative things. Uh, but then there's also an appropriate professional way uh, to approach certain gigs. So that's the first point. The second point is kind of a derivative of that in that Sometimes the simplest things uh, just sound the best. And so um, it's similar into that simple is better. That's a you know, professional take. This is a, you know, sometimes simpler is better just because musically it is. And so if, uh, you know, if I take an example like... That's when I did a video uh, probably a year ago on like some of my top favorite moments in music. And that's one of them. And that's an example of like, it's super simple. It's just one. I don't think it actually does one over three, but I am. One over three. Just kind of sitting on the fifth, which is now the two of the, you know, the four chord. I think that's like a two minor over five. Now, if I were to take that and go.
But I guess you can make an argument that maybe that sounds cool, but it's not any better or less than than the other version. Sometimes just simple stuff just really, really hits. Uh, another example. Um, oh yeah. Worthy is a Those are, you know, some of my favorite moments in some recent uh, worship music, just because it's so simple, but it just sounds so good. Um, if you were to do uh, like a... Again, sounds cool, but the simpler version just like really sits better, um, you know. And you can take, uh, let's do something like secular. So. Um Late in the So again, that's like another, it's one of my favorite uh, kind of secular songs <clears throat> because it's so pretty. Um, and so I think, you know, for guys like myself who have spent a ton of time learning just the... You know, that kind of stuff. We spend so much time learning that stuff where we almost associate that with better music and we forget that sometimes like music in and of itself can be this really beautiful thing before the jazz guys came around like completely just took everything and you know just added all these different things which are super cool and that I love all those things but music was beautiful before the 40s and so there's a lot of cool things a lot of pretty things that are just simple um, that we can do as musicians that just sound really good. That is not me at all taking a, a jab at jazz because I still consider myself at my core like a jazz pianist. But, you know, we've all spent time around those jazz guys or girls that truly believe that their form of music is the only true form of music and that everything else is less than... And it's easy to think that because, yes, we've spent all this time learning all these things, but there's a lot of music out there that is pretty and just sounds good because it's simple. Like, music at its core is just a pretty form um, of communication and just language, and 
it can be that way through simplistic writing. It can be that way through really complicated writing. And all that stuff caters to different people uh, with their different taste. But sometimes the simplest music just sounds the best. Um, <clears throat> sometimes the you know the complicated stuff sounds the best, but also sometimes the simple stuff sounds the best, and it's not bad if that's the case. So, yeah, simplest sometimes sounds the best musically. My next point, um, melody is king. So, I guess you can make an argument that harmony can be king too, but I find more times than not, like a good melody, either in your improv or uh, kind of a fill you're doing in a band, that is what people's ears gravitate towards. That's what people remember. That's what people like. Um, and so every time I do a fill or when I'm improvising, if I'm like shredding, it's a little bit different. But, you know, when I'm playing the simple stuff, it's like, hey, how can I like say something here with a line? And so, you know, back to the joy of the world example. So on that whole thing, I'm taking a melodic idea, creating some continuity between it. Those would all work as like fills between, you know, Those are melodies. They're not the main melody, but they're melodies inside of uh, just those little pockets of space, you know, where you're doing fills. You could do it, uh, and I hear a lot of people do this, where it's like, hey, that fill that you just played didn't feel like it had intentionality behind it. Uh, and maybe I could, you know, parentheses this and say melody is king, be intentional with how you play, like, fills and stuff. Uh, but you can go, joy to the world. Some of those, I guess, kind of worked. It's hard for me to force myself to play something that sucks, but uh, usually when I do that, that was unintentionally. Uh, so some of those, I guess, kind of worked, but they felt way less intentional and they felt way less melodic than uh, the, the previous examples I used. And so if you think about like being a listener, like you want to be listening to something that just sounds cohesive. And so when you have a joy to the world, uh, you want to hear something after that that kind of responds to that melody. You have a nice melody of joy to the world, and then you want to respond to that melody with a melody that also is nice, not just some random notes. And so um, being intentional with how you play fills, remembering that melody really is what I would argue most people take home and remember. Like harmony supports melody. And in some, you know, in some more heady types of music, harmony is just as much of a feature as melody. But just from a simplistic uh, perspective of music, melody is really what drives things. 
and just that's what people take home and so when you're filling and when you're playing behind people even when you're improvising you know um Like that sounds way better than I mean I guess it sounds cool but that's like a different completely different vibe and so just remember that melody is king again in that context like that can be where harmony starts to become king too, but in the simplistic perspective of music, melody is king. So the next point that I have, uh, listening is just as important as practicing. And so I, I would say that, you know, when you're super young, like if you're five, like when I started piano, practicing is really the only important thing that you can be doing. Maybe listening is sprinkled in there, but practicing is everything. At this point in my life, 31, listening is 95% of how I spend my time practicing in that, you know, I can listen to a ton of stuff and there can be several days between uh, when I sat down at the piano and played. And in that time, that space time between those two times I play piano, I've listened to a ton of things. And when I sit down, it's changed how I'm going to play. And so you do kind of reach a point uh, as a musician where your technique is kind of where it's at, you know, that's just where it's going to be for almost ever. Um, you've kind of learned the things that you're going to learn technically. Um, and really how you improve as a musician is just being exposed to new things over and over again, listening to old things over and over and over again. You can listen to something, you get to a point where you can listen to something and just understand what's happening and conceptualize that and then apply that next time you play. Uh, and that that is mainly how I spend my time practicing now. Even when I'm prepping for gigs, um, I'd say 80% of the time I probably never sit down and play it. I just listen to it a few times, understand what's going on. Um, but this is a tricky thing for me because I also love listening to podcasts. And so it's like, well, you know, if I want to spend some time practicing like with my ears, like how do I balance, um, you know, listening to podcasts that might make me intellectually smarter, but, you know, playing piano and practicing with my ears that makes me a better musician. So is that, there is that tug of war for me that I have to kind of juggle, um, you know, every day when I'm driving around. Uh, but we need to be listening. If you want to grow, at this point, if you're, you know, advanced or even past that, or even when you're a beginner, listening is everything. Like, if you're just listening to the same thing over and over and over again or not listening at all, basically the only music you're exposing to yourself is your own brain. And unless you are, you know, Keith Jarrett or Beethoven or Jacob Collier, that no one wants that. Like, we want what you have to offer in addition to you know, what everyone else has to offer. And we just kind of create this like musical thing as a community. Uh, but if you're only listening to what you put out and that's all you ever listen to is what your brain thinks of, that's not helpful. And so listening is important. Um, I would say it's just as important, if not more important at this stage in a later uh, career of music. I mean, I'm 31, so I'm 26 years deep in this. Um, listening is like everything for me now. That's where I get all my inspiration. Uh, I, I mean, I get some inspiration like sitting down and playing, but I get a ton of inspiration by listening. It's like, man, what that what I just listened to is sick. Like, I want to go and do that. Um, and like knowing kind of how to do it without having to sit down and play. And so uh, the way 
you kind of get to that point where you can listen to something and go, I understand what's happening is by one, listening a ton, but also transcribing. And so I spent a ton of time in college, like most jazz majors, transcribing stuff. And not even just, I'm not talking about like Googling transcriptions and just printing it and like playing through it, like really sitting down. We used to use, a, I think it was just called transcribe and you could like slow down audio and just listen to it um, like slow and just like you know work out just the smallest little things. I mean, I would just spend hours doing that and that would train your ear. That was, that was even more helpful than just taking someone's transcription and playing through it. That's also helpful. Like you should at least bare minimum be doing that. Uh, but you know, like really sitting down and slowing stuff down and working out what they're doing on your own is a whole nother level. Um, I guess it would be like, you know, starting a business versus just taking over a business that's already, you know, running. Like there's valuable lessons you learn by starting something, not just taking over when it's finished, just like transcribing. There is a ton of value in working the transcription from the ground up. And so, yeah, transcribing and just listening a ton is how you get better at listening. Um, and you just become a better listener by just getting better at music. Uh, and so, you know, you're not going to wake up and you're just the best listener that mu the music world's ever seen. Uh, very few people that actually happens to. Um, so, uh, yeah, just listen, 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 listen. That is everything uh, that's super important. If you're not listening to music you're probably not growing at all. Maybe you can play scales faster, but you're not actually getting, you know, in, in just any better at music, which is not helpful. So uh, that's the fourth point. The fifth point, uh, you know, I've done this whole thing about like simple is better, simple is better, melody is king, listening is important. Uh, but I do want to talk about technique for a second. Having really good technique is important so you can play the really simple things with excellence and so me being able to play me being able to play that helps with And the reason why having a uh, really good technique on just playing the fast stuff uh, and just having really a high bar for technique, why that's so important for the small stuff is you can really, you know, like I know a lot of people that can emotionally kind of exp like feel music needs to be a certain way, but they can't actually get it to sound that way because they're taking their faint. They just don't have absolute control over their technique and so being able to play that's why scales and arpeggios and you know having some speed like you know having fast technique is not important so you can be able to play fast like I used to think that in school so I, I want to be able to play scales at a blistering pace so I can shred at a blistering pace and that's while that can be helpful um, a lot of why you want to be able to shred scales at a blistering place pace is so you can play like the slow stuff and the medium stuff with just true like authority, you know, and just be able to completely articulate like whatever emotion you want to put behind something. And I hear guys that play, it's like, man, I can, I hear what you're doing. There's no emotion there. And I just know that's the case. One, maybe you don't have any emotion for it, but usually it's like, you just don't have any control over your technique. Like, you know, it, it, it almost sounds like, I don't know how to articulate this without being nerdy, but there's like a, there's a compressor on your technique. It's like you basically just have press the note or don't, you know, it's like you're either on or off. I'm like, man, there's, 
there's so much dynamic range that you can throw into something. And this actually kind of annoys me. Um, <clears throat> even at my certain, like my current church that I play at, <clears throat> and really even in like, this is a, a pet peeve with the modern kind of worship world, is in this kind of like wall of sound um, culture that we're in right now, at least with CCM music. Um, there's not a lot of room for dynamic playing. Uh, and I've, I've been given feedback before of like, Hey, you're playing a little bit too dynamically. Like, can you put a compressor on your, your, your chain? So the highs aren't as high and the lows aren't as low. And that like kind of irks me to my core. Like I want to serve the environment that I'm playing in and I, I choose to play where I play, uh, cause I like being there, but there are little things like that where it's like, like what happened to expression? you know, and what happened to dynamics. And so that is one of my you know biggest pet peeves with uh, the current state of like modern worship, but that's maybe a separate video. But yeah, technique is so important. So you can play the simple things with excellence. I mean, I, I see people that have terrible technique. I was like, yeah, like it looks like you're really working to play that whole note, <laughs> you know? And so, yeah, technique is super important. Um, I have other videos that are <clears throat> kind of talk about technique more like scales and arpeggios, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Um, but yeah, man, practice that technique. Uh, so yeah, simple is better most of the time from professional sp perspective. Sometimes the simplest things sound the best musically. Melody is king. Uh, listening is just as important, if not more important than practicing. And then technique is important so you can play the simple things with excellence. Uh, those are just five things that I've learned throughout my career that really change how I approach piano, change how I approach music. Um, and so, yeah, hopefully that was helpful. Again, please like, sub, share. If you're still watching this, comment, like share with a friend in a passive aggressive way. Say, hey, I watched this video. You should watch it. You know, uh, send this to your bass player or something. So, um, yeah, hope this video is helpful. Uh, hope you all have a good new year, um, and I'll see y'all later.